Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how to make a traditional rawhide rattle. Here I'm using natural rawhide. It has a tan color. And I'm going to make uh, two circles using this funnel as my template. And this is measuring approximately three and three quarter inch across. Now the handle that I'm going to use is about a three-quarter inch diameter. The circumference of a three-quarter inch will be approximately three times that dimension. So you want to have half of the circumference as the width of the tongue that's coming off of the rattle. Half of three-quarter will be approximately one and an eighth to one and a quarter. So we want to lay out approximately one and a quarter inch. If you want a way to get some rawhide real easy and cheap, you can go to a store and buy a dog chew, a rawhide dog chew. And then what you do is you soak it in warm water overnight and just unroll the rawhide and then you can lay out the pattern on that. And when you're doing these rattles, you don't have to be limited just to a circle. You can make various shapes. A lot of people make the rattles in the shape of a turtle. And that's a real popular one. Okay, now these two are not perfect with each other. But when I soak them, they're going to stretch different, like this area here is going to get larger because it was wrinkled and it's pretty stiff. Also you want to notice that there is a flesh side and a hair side. When you put it together, you want to have the hair side out, that would be the smooth side. But we don't need to worry about that until after it's soaked. Um, you need to punch holes for the lacing. When it's in this condition, it's too hard for punching. I would recommend to soak it first and then the leather will be softer. Um, we'll trim the two and make them the same after it's soaked and then we'll punch the holes. My method for soaking is I'm using Tupperware. I ran warm water. You don't want to use hot. And I take another container, the same size, place over and I put a little bit of water in there to act as a weight. Just like that. And we'll leave that soak. And when it gets soft and pliable, we'll continue. I just got back from PetSmart and this is what I found. Okay, this is rawhide, dog chews, and this is what we're going to use to make some uh, rawhide rattles. And the other thing is they have horns, hooves, and these have a few other purposes. So that'll be addressed in a, another video. Here are these dog chews. These are rawhide and they're from beef. And once these soaked, you can unroll them. And what I found in the past is the center, they usually fill with a lot of scrap pieces, but the outer part will be a large piece. And this one looks like it makes almost two complete circles. So that'll be, give me a pretty wide piece out of that and I don't know what to expect from the center. 
and each one is probably the same way. So we're going to soak these and see what we got. Here these chews have been soaked overnight and let's see what we have. Okay, this looks like it's all one piece. What I'll do is I'll stretch it out and let it dry flat. And then that will allow me material to work with. There's some filler. That's one sheet. There's filler. So that one package looks like it could make, oh, maybe six or eight rattles. And again, you're going to have a, a smooth side, which will be the hair side, and then the rough flesh side. Put the flesh side to the inside. Here you can see I have the rawhide already soaked. And you can see how different the two are. And what I'm going to do next is trim these to even them up. using these clips to keep them in register. Okay, now you want to back it up with end grain, hard wood. Soft grain, let me show you what it does. It compresses and it uh, makes indentations into the wood. It, it needs to hold up this does not cut all the way through. This is a real dense wood. See close. The annular rings are very close together. And this is a piece of firewood. And I cut a block just to use as stamping. And here, if you look real close, you can see the edge of the cutter, it holds up to the blade and it allows for a real clean cut. So I'm going to start cutting right here on the corner, I'm showing you the gap that I'm setting. Okay, I cut until it goes into the block. It does not make an indentation. It makes a nice clean cut. And if you can see that, it's a clean hole all the way through. I'm going to space these cuts. You can see they're not, the two halves are not perfect. It's okay when we tie the knot, it'll come in, it'll pull it in. Okay, making a nice clean cut. These punches are approximately a quarter inch apart. I'll go around the entire perimeter including this tang that goes to the handle, holds it on the handle. <clears throat> All the holes are punched and we're going to remove the clamps. And I'm placing the smooth side out 
and you could have had it this way when you punched the holes. Okay, now we're ready to stitch. I'm going to use the artificial sinew and I need to use two needles. So we need to make sure that we have plenty of thread or sinew. We're going to make a crisscross stitch. We're going to sew from both sides, front and then back. I have both needles. I have it started right here. I made sure that I found the center of the thread. I'm using approximately five feet of sinew and you're better to have too much than not enough. So one needle goes from one side. The second needle comes from the opposite side. And we pull the slack out. And it will make an X. The thread that's coming out this side, you want to come across so that it'll start making an X. There's the X. Pull them tight. Okay. And we do the entire perimeter and knot it off when you get to the end. Now to speed the sewing up, you can run one of the threads all the way around. And you can see I pulled it tight and it kind of is making it dish shaped and that will help um, when you fill it with the sand it'll help fill it and make it rounder. So as I thread these I pull each one tight. And like I said before you can make these rattles in different shapes. A real common one is to make it look like a turtle. I like to make them round and then paint on the outside and you could paint whatever animal or a turtle on the outside. Last stitch and remove the needle. Tighten both cords and tie it off. Okay, if it dried too much, you can at this point you can Soak it again to soften it up. Mine is still fine. And I'm going to use this funnel. And now we fill it up. We're going to fill it with sand. This sand I got from the beach. Opening it up. I'm pushing it in and trying to stretch the leather at the same time. You want this to be tight. It's filled with sand. And you could stick a wine cork in there to keep it open or just leave it because that's going to have to be softened later. 
Here's a wine cork, perfect size. It's uh, holding the sand and keeping the neck round. After sitting overnight, the rawhide is hard as a rock and we can save the sand. Water-based polyurethane drying. You can use either polyurethane. Water base is milky when it's wet. As it dries, it'll be clear. It's a faster dryer and no fumes. After the polyurethane has dried, this section has no polyurethane on it. We need to soften this up so that we can put it onto the handle. So I have warm water and I pre-measured and I will set this here and let it soak until that end softens. Here it's been soaking about three hours and it's fairly soft. You see this is still hard. So that's enough soaking. And what we need now is to fill the shaker with some substance that will make it uh, rattle. Here I'm using uh, popcorn because it's a hard uh, kernel. You can use small pebbles, um, dried beans. So you got to determine how much you need in there to make it sound. And the way to do that is to add some and shake it and see what you like. Uh, if it sounds good. I've already d done that and I determined that about an eighth of a cup this is an eighth of a cup right here. It's just about right for this rattle. <clears throat> okay, so we load it with the seed or stone. And then we take our handle. Put our handle in there. This is the end treatment. The end that goes into the handle, come down about three quarter of an inch to an inch, and start working on a groove. This groove will hold the rawhide rattle onto the handle. When the rawhide is wet, It'll be tied over this groove and it'll pull it in and it will be locked. And right here is where I am going to tie it. So we want to go around the groove. Okay, you can see it's soft, but when it dries, it'll be real rigid. Okay, in addition to this cord, I'm going to wrap some more cord on that neck. So I'm taking this artificial sinew. You could use uh, you could use rawhide and wrap it with that. Okay, now we let that dry. Here I ripped some sinew down to be real fine 
and we're going to decorate this with some feathers. Okay, now we're going to take these longer feathers first. We're going to do an applique. Now we have these shorter ones. After the feathers are secured, we're going to dress it up with some buckskin. To draw a circle on a sphere, use a cap that will allow you to make contact all the way around the sphere. Like that. Here I'm using duct tape. And what I want to do is attach leather and this is going to hold it and if you see what I'm doing here I'm folding it back that's leaving the tape attached with the sticky part and then I'm going to run this around with the sticky side up. Okay, now I have a sticky handle. From there, I'm taking a piece of tanned leather. And next, I'll trim this and stitch it. And that tape is going to hold it while I'm trying to stitch. Handle stitched on. Duct tape holds it tight and allows it to be stitched easy. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.